Yo, yo, we are live. It's your favorite hip hop connoisseur, Drew Soul Quest, and you are watching Quest Combo, where we talk the culture because we are the culture. It's Dev Devious one more time, man. One more time, I promised you, and I'm gonna promise you it's gonna be a one more time after this, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, many, many more for sure, for sure. Man, we appreciate the love. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate you listening. Make sure you like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you are aware every time we drop this dopeness for you to check out. Um, if you can't watch this, if you, if you at work or you here or there and you just want to pop in them ear pods, hop, pop in the headphones or whatever and just listen to the dopeness yeah. and this insight that we giving check out the quest convo podcast on spotify we are there for you every episode is there for you to listen to so we got you covered all the way around man once again we appreciate the support once again like share subscribe make sure you comment we want to hear from the community like i said we here for the hip-hop community we are here for the hip-hop culture so we want to hear from you we want to hear your insight do you agree with us do you not agree with us uh, we want to hear all angles. So, uh, yeah, we're here for it. So today, uh, yeah, how you feeling over there, Dale? Uh, I, I feel better than I did yesterday. Okay, okay. So that's, I, that's the best way I can put it, you know. Yeah, been yeah. dealing with some, dealing with this. I finally, I ain't even old, but I, I, I finally hear old niggas when they talk about this getting old shit. Right. It's always some new shit just hurt. And I'm like, so this is this is what that's like, huh? Oh yeah, you just wake up to some shit stinging. All right, for sure. Yeah, once once thirty and up, man, it just it, it just is what it is. At that point, you just gotta do the best to eat right, take care of yourself, and all that shit. Because thirty and up, yeah, it is what it is. You might get up, I knew, and fucking back hurt. I knew I was getting older because I went I went to the bar after work the other day, and I had I only had three beers, mm -hmm. and I I was like, am I okay to drive, nigga? Like this. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't hit, had no shots, I ain't had no drinks, nothing, just a couple brews, and I didn't let the brews settle. I'm like, I don't know if I can make it home. I thought I had to give my keys to somebody. I said, damn, I can't even hang like I used to. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, man, that's that, that's that real shit. But hey, we we blessed that we here though. Shit, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. To this point, shit. So today. Man, we are about to talk about the essence. We really about to dig deep and talk about this culture. Um, so what y'all got to understand, like, and it's not everybody doesn't share the same sentiments. Everybody doesn't share the same point of view. But hip hop is more than just a genre of music. You know what I mean? It is truly a culture. And that's why people like me and Dev and thousands millions of others hold it so true to our hearts and we look at it a certain way when we feel whether you are artists or not where we feel certain people don't respect it and disrespect it and feel like they don't have to respect the forefathers they don't have to have any knowledge of the forefathers they feel like they don't have to respect the culture or know anything about the culture. They can just hop in and ride a wave and do their thing. And like I said, that's what a lot of artists do. We see so much of that now. And, you know, it is what it is. Um, it might be getting you some money. It might be doing your thing. Um, but it's not really healthy um for the culture and like right. i said that's the only and i hate to see it because obviously the majority of people in rap are black people so mm -hmm. these are you know the majority of people that jump into rap are black it's one of the few things that black people can truly say that we that we created you know what I mean? It's not even mm -hmm. a bunch of shit that we can say we created. It's one of the few things we can say we can, we created. It's from the hood, the same place that you artists come from, the same, whether it's 
30, 40 years ago or whether it's right now and you in the trap, you come from the same place, the same elements. And it's just like, how come you don't care? How come you don't want to try to understand or know anything about it? And I'm not saying all of y'all are like that, but it's such a huge group that's like that. That's one of the main things that kind of prompt me and Deb to even uh, do this segment. You know, do you know the five elements of hip hop? Do you really know? Do you even know that there are elements to hip hop? Right you know, there. The forefathers, you know, and, and, and I've gave that analogy before. Um, people go into sports and, and all these different things and you play the game how the foundation was set. I've made that analogy before. You don't, I don't care how how young you are, how much you want to be different, how much you want to try to change the game and add your flair. You can do all those things, but you still got to respect the foundation and you got to understand the foundation. When your coach is putting these plays together, you got to understand the how the court is and how these moves, you, you can't just go in and just, do your own thing. You you own a basketball court. You just you're not even trying to put the ball in the hoop. You just you gonna roll it on the ground to your guy. You can't do all these things because it was a foundation. Same thing on the football field. You can't go out and have uh 19 niggas on one side. That's against the rules. You can't do that. Right. <laughs> you're gonna get a disqualified. You can't do that shit. It's a foundation that was put into place. And if you want to play in this game, you got to understand the foundation and go by those rules. Now, you can still do your thing within that, but you can't just throw it out, act like it don't matter. You know, same thing with rap, man. Same fucking uh, yeah. thing. I second all that. I definitely second all that because um, I've just noticed that in the past, I'll say 10 years, basically since I've been 18 and, uh, and up, um where it's just kind of like and i noticed it, it i've noticed it it's particularly uh hooping and hip-hop as it pertains to young black america or young black americans where they basically try to like you said they try to they just try to change some shit that's like not changeable to suit their needs or wants or tastes or whatever you know, you see a lot of guys today, just especially when it comes like hooping or something like that. You know, just I mean, just completely ready to just throw away niggas in the '80s and the '90s and shit away. I'm like, and and to a certain extent, I can understand that, but I'm just saying, I don't, I don't see where you can just throw Charles Barkley away. Oh fuck him, he ain't shit. Cause cause all these new bouncy jumping shooting ass niggas now. You know, I can't. I can't imagine just saying, oh, fuck Patrick Ewing, and prime Patrick Ewing before the mm. knees. Oh, fuck Patrick Ewing. You know, he, mm. he ain't got nothing for these for these other guys. You know what I'm saying? And some dudes' skill sets may transition more or less, but it's like, damn, you know, them, them dudes is great players and Hall of Famers for a reason. You know, like, it ain't just, okay, they played in the 90s. It ain't nobody, and I, I don't understand why in hip-hop music, you, you, know, you don't see nobody do that. You don't see young white Americans doing that. You don't see them saying, oh, Pink Floyd ain't shit. Or, oh, fuck Errol Smith. I don't care about that shit. Where did, where my, uh, you know, where, where the, the Nickelback at or whatever the fuck they listen to these days? You, they're not disrespecting the people that came before them. I'm not just going to hear a bunch of people saying, oh, I don't care about what Elton John got to say. Fuck him. You know, X, Y, Z. And I don't see why that only happens in black America or young black America where we kind of just get this we kind of get this here and now moment and that's the only thing that's the only thing that matters and if the shit is like a month older or uh, or older than a month and going on back years then n none of that shit matters because we all about the moment right now and i don't you know i don't i don't think that's right i don't i don't think that that's that's cool because you got to understand that that's you know niggas coming before you is the reason you able you even able to do it like the way that you're doing it yeah it's uh it kind of goes you know i ain't gonna touch on it too to go too deep with it but it almost goes to 
you know, niggas love to say a nigga is hating, a nigga is hating, a nigga is hating. We've been saying that for some years now. It, it started off with player hating, and then it kind of went went from that to just hating. And it kind of goes back once again, which has been a huge problem just in the black community as a whole, the whole crab in the barrel mentality, where every nigga is talking about hating, but it's so many that do it and don't even acknowledge that they do it. But you'll say another nigga is hating, but you're doing the same fucking thing. Where right. That crab in a barrel mentality, a motherfucker get too big or get too much. You want to talk shit about them, tear shit apart instead of networking, combining, trying to build a business, build a conglomerate or whatever. Nope. J- I ain't going to fuck with him. Blah, blah, blah. It's it's we got to break that mentality. So since it's such a huge thing in a black community, obviously hip hop is a is a black creation, black culture. It just kind of trickles over where it's not going to cost you anything. It's not going to change any perception about you as an artist. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to do anything just to acknowledge and pay respect to these great artists before you that paved the way for you, it costs you nothing. It's not going to change. It's it's room out here. It's enough money. It's enough space. And the music ain't going to disappear. Nothing. Yeah. You, you still can be over there, do your young shit for the young people and still make your millions of dollars without shitting on the forefathers, without not caring about the motherfuckers that came before you not acknowledging that what like it, it's just a, a huge disrespect for this culture that you're in making millions of dollars changing your life feeding your family i don't give a fuck what nobody say it's disrespectful for you to not give a fuck and not even care to know about the forefathers to under, try to understand some of the elements about the culture that you're in. It's fucking stupid and it's disrespectful. Y'all making all this money off of other motherfuckers' blood, sweat, and tears before you that are able to allow you to do this. It's just like the same if, um, okay, you got a, a black man, he build up this big ass company and then his sons, he he teaching his 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 sons the business as he's going along, as he's going along, and then they get 21, and then they like, okay, it's time. I built up this business to a zillion dollars. It's time, my 21-year-old sons, to take it over and let's do the damn thing. And then the sons get in and just shit on the daddy. Oh, nigga, shit, we got this and whatever we, we you 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 can't do it better than we about to do mm, it nigga yeah. and blah 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 and mm-hmm. whatever go sit your old ass down yep. and blah 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 it's a disrespectful spit in the face bitch you wouldn't be here if your daddy didn't put in the blood sweat and tears and built up this this culture and this business to what it is it's the same principle it's fucking disrespectful bottom line i'll just say look at it like you look at your damn grandparents man like you might not agree with or even understood, you know, how they live their life or how they got to where they is or how they see things the way that they do. But what at the end of the day, after all that, you still what, Drew? You still respect them. Yeah. You still got respect and you still got respect for what they've done with their life. You trying to get to where they at. You know, that's how I look at it. You, you, some of these young niggas, you ain't got no, you ain't got no platinum plaques. You ain't got no, no hits. You ain't got nothing. You you really a lot of them really relevant just because of the social media shit because we got internet where everybody can just be connected and that's where half of your cloud and your and your and your fame and all that shit's coming from you know a lot of niggas that's rap they they got it they doing other shit to stay relevant that's not music related a hundred percent so when you look at it like that I don't see how you can just have disrespect for something that you barely even doing the shit you lucky that you able to to you know kind of skate by and not do shit that you in you know it's not it's not too often people can get into a career path i can't be a mechanical engineer and then all of a sudden i'm just painting and shit every time i go into my damn chemical engineering job to make my check you know a lot of people don't get to really do that 
a thousand percent. That's a great, great point you brought up. Um, it's just, man, it, it's like I said, it, it's so, so disrespectful. Like the, like you said, social media is the gift and the curse. It's a great tool. I can't knock it. I definitely can't knock it. Shit, we own this motherfucker. You right. know what I mean? So I can't definitely can't knock it. But the simple fact that you don't even take the time to think about that, how when motherfuckers like me or motherfuckers in my age group say that a lot of these older artists was better than y'all, a lot of them take that instant offense to that. And that and, and a lot of that comes from the point you just brought up where before social media and all this shit we couldn't see you every five minutes we didn't know how cool you was we didn't know how many bitches you was fucking we didn't know how hard and respected you was in the hood yeah. we didn't know how much money you had we didn't know what foods you like all this shit we didn't know none of that the only thing we had to base you on was the music, music that you presented to us and that's the only thing we had to judge you by if we like you or, or or like the music or not. So just on that alone, where now, like you said, y'all don't even, the music is damn near secondary. Right. You know, on the social media thing, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. You you front motherfuckers ain't even rich. And, and you and you got all this bullshit to, to put up that facade to, and show your personality. It's like y'all niggas are basically... If anything, a lot of y'all niggas are more fucking actors than you are rappers. Y'all niggas are actors and personalities first. Yeah. And then you of motherfucking uh, yeah. rapper. You know what I mean? If you, yeah, that that's what it is really at the end of the day. Back in the day, we didn't have none of that. We would see a Nas or a Pac or a Big. We would see them once in a blue moon on a video or once in a blue moon a magazine article we can read and 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 get some shit out of so it was 100 percent solely based on the music that they could create is why you know as far as us fucking with them and loving them the way that we do so it was just a harder grind overall so we had a harder grind how can you not respect that when it's so much easier for y'all now we we had people like that still end up becoming great and that's when like now hip-hop hands down hottest culture most popular genre of music it's everything hip-hop is in everything it's in the fucking commercials it's in this it's hip-hop is it is the culture at it's the end all of the day yeah there is no there is nothing else hip-hop is the full 100 percent culture across the board it's in everything Nigga, yeah, it's easy now. Fucking do your thing. It, it's accepted. We we want you to do this and do that. It's accepted. Versus 25 years ago when motherfuckers for real, as, as y'all love to say, out the mud, when motherfuckers was for real getting it out the mud. Hip-hop was not accepted. It wasn't really on the fucking radio like that. Businesses and brands didn't want to fuck with you or none of that. They was truly getting it out the mud truly on the grind working their ass off trying to get heard and seen and trying to make money or whatever so just just yeah keep all that in, in mind man the, for real. the best way the best way to put it for you that I, I think i can sum up everything that you just said in you know um in this in this basically little statement right here is that rap today for most people most rappers in the game or whatever you want to call it is is basically just become about the lifestyle it's all it's, it's more about the lifestyle of a rapper than actually being a rapper mm, that is it that sums it all up a, a thousand percent that summed it up i need that on a fucking t-shirt <laughs> yeah yeah it's 100 percent. y'all motherfuckers are addicted to the hip hop rap lifestyle that was created and you give a fuck about all of that than the actual rapping itself. That's that's it right there. When the rap was supposed to get you the damn lifestyle. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But so, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. But um 
Yeah, man. But that's what we're talking about today. Uh, the five elements of hip hop. Like we said before, hip hop is not just a genre of music. It is truly a culture created by black people from the ghetto. Um, and youngins, please keep in mind, y'all have a lot of the youngins have this thing where uh, they feel like they out here doing their thing and shit is different. I'm just here to tell you nothing is new. Nothing is different for all the for all the dope you have sold, for all the niggas you have shot, for all the bitches you have fucked, for all the ratchet ghetto shit you've done. Niggas my age have done it a thousand times more, way more bodies, more holes, more yes. this, more that. We've done it a thousand times more. We've uh, fucked more bitches than you have in three lifetimes, nigga. So nothing is new. Nothing is new. You think just because now a motherfucker is older and more mature and trying to grow and, and be more a better man, like we just lame and don't know shit about shit. That's a huge misconception. Oh yeah, definitely. We don't don't make the the same mistakes that our generation did, young niggas. We we also thought that we did everything more so and was doing it big. And you know, it, it's it's everything has been done before for the most part. You can't really. Why you think everything getting repeated and shit now? Why you think everything a remake? Why you think everything is just a sample of, of old hits and all this? Because you can't really do a bunch of original shit no more. So, yeah, every ain't no ain't nothing new. People, they they've they been hustling and and pimping and all this shit since when your granddaddy and them, your great granddaddy and them was doing exactly. shit. It, it, all this is all, niggas was getting stabbed up and shot in the alleys in, in, in the 40s and, and 50s. Nigga, don't get it twisted. A hundred percent. You say running numbers, slanging hair on. Yeah, all this. Doing, was, well, yeah uh, in the in the in the uh, Louisiana uh, bayous. Right. A pooch. Right. You, know, oh. you don't know, no, you don't know about no hooch. Stop. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, man. Motherfuckers been getting it. Um, but uh, oh yeah, y'all gotta support uh, dopesthiphoptees dot com. Uh, once again, they are tees and hoodies created for cool people that love hip hop culture, and they're also created by cool people that love hip hop culture. So y'all definitely check it out. Um, it's summertime now; everybody's looking for the fresh tee to wear with your outfit. Um, everything that we have is it's different it's unique it's a standout piece that's going to get that attention uh, people are going to ask you about it y'all check it out right now dopest hip hop tees.com uh, right now you can use the promo code i love hip hop and it's going to give you 20 percent off your purchase so go support go tell a friend like i said we are for the culture and from the culture so um let's get into it man um so I don't know if y'all familiar with Thrive Collective, um, another, should I call it a pillar of the hip hop community? So it's a guy, Randy Mason. He's a huge part of that. Um, I got this video of him um, that was on YouTube. He breaks down like the, uh, the five elements of hip hop culture. So I'm going to play that before me and Dave move forward to really um, I love the way he breaks it down, and we're going to kind of expand on that. But let me uh, play this for y'all. Hey, what's up? My name is Randy Mason. I am the studio arts director at Thrive Collective. I'm also a hip hop artist. I love hip hop because hip hop is fun. Hip hop is all about community and creativity. The five elements of hip hop are not only fundamental to hip hop music and culture, but they also represent five fundamental human needs that we all have. MCing or rapping is more than just music. It's about having a voice. Um, it's about being heard and telling your story. Also, it's about speaking up for those who are in need. Everybody has a voice and everyone deserves to be heard. Graffiti, um, it's more than just tagging. Graffiti is about having a name um, and a name represents identity and existence. A name is the first thing that we get when we're born. Um, everybody has a name and everyone deserves to be seen and recognized. Breaking or breakdancing is more than dance. It's about movement, figurative movement and 
physical movement and movement represents momentum and forward progress. Uh, a movement helps us to break free from limitations caused by things like poverty and violence. Everyone has a movement and deserves to move freely. DJing is not only about parties, DJing is about remixing technology to create communities of peace, unity, and fun. Essentially, DJs manipulate technology to create new and fresh spaces. Lastly, the element of knowledge. Knowledge isn't only about having the answers. Knowledge is about awareness and action. And we all deserve um, access to accurate information. And we all deserve to be both a student and a teacher because learning isn't limited to the classroom and teaching isn't reserved for adults. We can all learn from each other. I like that. Yeah, yeah. I I, uh, I love the way he breaks it down and just ties it into regular life shit. I, I thought that was real dope. He he broke that down uh, quite well. Um, and I will say, just watching that, so. Uh, let's keep in mind, uh, August 12th, 1974, Bronx, New York. That was the birth of hip hop, Cool Herc, Africa Bambata. Those are, that's the birthplace. Those are the creators. You know, you can't really uh, dispute that. It was a lot of people involved in it, but when you really talk about it, those are the main two. Um, now, when it comes to these elements, I notice one uh, that people kind of switch in and out or include in their shit, and that's with the uh, so beatboxing. So some use like you notice Randy, he uh, his fifth element was knowledge, which I see a lot of people use that. Yeah, but that's what I thought people, it was. Yeah, but but some people won't say knowledge; they'll say beatboxing. Okay. Um, I don't know really where I stand with that. I kind of you. It's almost like you can kind of add that shit on the DJ or something low key, or that's like an extension of that because it's 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 a, it's a beat. DJs, yeah, they originally was uh, originally DJs was just creating new music by mixing shit together. So yeah, it's a tough one for me. Like I can't. I can't discredit the the knowledge ele element because it's been so many artists in hip hop that have that's been their platform to give you the knowledge and kind of be a spokesperson for the hood and tell you things you need to know and all that stuff. And all of us, especially a lot of us older guys, because a lot of the older artists had that element. So we benefited from it. We learned shit that we didn't even know that we didn't know. You know what I mean? So I can't really discount that element. It's like with the beatboxing. At one time, it was so, such a huge part because once again, rap come from the hood. Niggas, we didn't even have in the older days, motherfuckers didn't even have access to go to no studios or didn't even necessarily have a dj access to a dj or dj equipment but it was such a part of the hood and they loved it so much that okay we created you know niggas we are creative they came up with a whole nother way i can rap and do this thing and battle from this motherfucker making a beat that's beatboxing is it's some it, it's, it's it's truly a skill it is, whether, yeah, whether it's it still is. relevant or not, it's still a skill. When you think about beatboxing, you think of your Dougie Fresh, Biz Markie, Biz Markey, uh, you think about Buffy from the Fat Boys, you know. Um, outside of that, I'm not familiar with a whole bunch, but those are like the main three that kind of took it to a whole nother level. Yeah, they turned it into an art form. Yeah, where it was a fucking DJ. Like the motherfucker, the way they beatboxing, I mean, you are. I, I do have a beat. You're making a for real beat. So, you know, people kind of discount that one, but, you know, I, I respect that one. Um, just kind of touch on him. The B-boying, you know, that, that like, dude was saying, the dance aspect of it, uh, you know, a lot of this I see, 
and I could be wrong, you know, I'm not from the South, but when it comes to the b-boying, I've always seen that element displayed more so on the East Coast, and then it kind of trickle to the West Coast. And b-boying is just more so the breakdance element. That was an extension of dance that was created for hip hop. You know what I mean? They weren't break dancing was not involved in any other genre of music. Niggas wasn't playing no R and B or no uh Rick James and and all this shit break dancing to it. That's something that was a form of dance. Wasn't right. no niggas spinning on their back to Rick James. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it was an element of dance uh that was a hundred percent created from hip hop. You know what I mean? They all these moves and different way of moving it was completely different motherfuckers was moving their bodies and shit like you had never seen it was some elements of some of the older older dances some elements of the african dances but it was just different shit that we had never seen and it was solely you know for uh hip-hop music you know what i mean um some of the more famous uh, hip hop dancers, b boys, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Wing, you had uh, Vicious Victor, you had Lil Zoo, you had uh, and the Jinjo crew, and Asia. Those are some of the ones that you know are kind of noted and, and no really. Crazy Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm tripping. You know what I crazy. Am, dude. What, what yeah. Crazy legs head, man. Crazy legs. How could I? He he should have been on the first on the top. Yeah, of the I was like, wait, 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 wait a minute. I was like, hold yeah. on, I'm in right here. But go yeah, ahead. Definitely crazy legs. Um, then you get into the MCN. Uh, so I want to say the MCN. Like, like personally, out of these elements, the DJing and the MCing, hands down, top two most important elements of hip hop. Without that, there is no hip hop. Right, facts. You, you could you could have the knowledge. We could spit the knowledge about our uh, black history and and things we need to know about the world. We could uh, dance our ass off with the break dancing and and all that, and we could beatbox and and beatbox our ass off and all that but if a motherfucker ain't spitting saying these rhyming words in their own way and if you ain't got a beat to put it to that is the that is the music that's like, the money that's yeah, what that's people was willing to pay for yeah so the the mcn and the djing two most important elements hands down uh to speak on the djing uh Obviously, people still have DJs. Uh, you see it more now when people go on tour. You know, people go on tour, you got to have a DJ pretty much, unless you're going to do the live band thing. But most people just have a DJ doing their thing. So the DJ is relevant. It's not as relevant as it used to be where the DJ was a part of the group. He was getting paid just like what you was getting paid. He was his name would be on the ticket just like your name was on the ticket. So we passed that point where, you know what I mean? The DJ is not part of the group and a true essential piece anymore. I will say that. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong though. Wasn't there a point in time where the DJ was more important than the MC or the, uh, D, or, it, the or the DJ was the star? It was, it was, um, hands down in the, in the eighties, when we were just getting our feet off the ground with, with the whole hip hop culture, the DJ definitely was the, the, the key point. He was, he was more popular, um, just as important as the MC, uh, just as relevant, all of that, you know, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Um, and then we get to the MC so mc first of all the true definition of mc if you even take the the musical aspect out of it master of ceremonies that's where mc comes from the master of ceremonies so when i when i look at that there are 
it's a whole bunch of rappers, not a bunch of MCs. And if you of the culture, like I am, a true head, a true connoisseur like I am, you know what the fuck I'm talking about. A MC, just to give you an example, a MC is a KRS one. A MC is a Rock Kim. Those are MCs. Those are people that truly lived up to master of ceremonies. They truly moved up to M to they truly represented MC moving the crowd. They they truly lived up to that. And obviously it's it's a lot of other people that fall under that umbrella. Um outside of that, the rest of y'all niggas is rapping and you doing your thing. A lot of y'all are good. A lot of y'all are successful and everything, but there's a huge uh, difference. The the MC status to me, that's almost like almost like a leader. I put that under a, a being a leader umbrella, almost where your words are so powerful and impactful. Um, and then obviously some of the best I named. I hate these. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Get off. Well, I ain't getting off subject, but real quick, let me throw this in there. So, for example, you go online, and that's why you got to know your history, and this is why you got to listen to the old niggas that was outside back in the day when this shit was just first formed, so mm -hmm. you can really get it from the source. Because once, once again, like I said, motherfuckers don't care, and it allows the people that don't care about this culture to manipulate information and twist information all around. For example, okay, I'm not even going to say the site I'm on. Looking at it from here. So they got the top the top 10 best hip-hop MCs ever. Uh, they ain't really saying ever. I mean, they they still got like Andre on here, Nas, Rakim, people like that. But this article is from when is this article from? Uh, do they have a date on here? Okay, so for example, this article is from uh 2020, so a couple years. So. This is what they have on some of the standout top MCs in the game. <laughs> uh, so Kendrick, I agree with that for sure. J. Cole. Uh, it depends on who you're talking to, I think. Yeah, yeah. I, I But I'll give you that. I, I'll say Kendrick, J. Cole. Uh, I give Pusha T. He's yeah. on here. I'll even give you the, the Joiner Lucas and the Logic. Because they, they are really some hip-hop niggas that are really got bars and entertaining with it. But then you're going to have fucking uh, Juice World, Travis Scott, The Baby, and Tory Lanez. You're going to have them on the list for the, some of the top MCs in the game. Travis Scott. I, I don't even know. What is he? Like, is he, is he really a rapper? Like, right. Like... I, and and I fuck with some of the older Travis Scott stuff. I fuck with the uh, what's the mega mega hit he had with Drake? Uh, shit, sicko mode. Yeah, I even fuck with that. But don't say this nigga's one of the top MCs in the game because he's not. He, this nigga is a no. He he ad lib a lot of his shit. Yeah, a lot of his lyrics is just ad libs and all that. A hundred percent. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I, yeah. That, but that's what I'm saying. I guess. <laughs> uh, uh, but that's my point. A ten year old that don't know shit about shit, born into this technology, and all their information comes from the internet. They'll look at that. Oh yeah, Travis Scott is one of the greatest MCs of all time because oh, this is the information destroyed. that's available to them. They don't know about no Nas and Rock him and this and that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's I, I would if you if somebody if one of my friends said that shit to me, <laughs> I, would, 
Oh, Travis Scott is one of the best MCs of all time. You know I don't fuck with you no more. I can't be associated with you, nigga. Cause who who what kind of who, man? Listen, you 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 deceived me into thinking that you was a good guy till you said some dumb shit like that. Crazy. Cause I can't. You can't be serious. Some of that shit. I, I actually like some of the, some of the baby shit, but he just he just a street guy. Yeah, he like, just a street guy that rap. You know he 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 handles his lane well, but you know you can't make him more than what the fuck he is. He is what he is. Well, you can't just add value onto this nigga because that's what you didn't put it in your article and shit. A hundred percent. I don't believe. I don't. I don't go that way. I don't. Yeah, I don't like that. Now, what I'll say, um, as far as the element goes, um, this is somebody who's younger. This is somebody who. You know, I, I, I've, you know, I've, I've listened to my fair share of things and everything like that, but I would say, um, this is more from a, an older list from the beginning, you know, kind of time period. I would think that honestly, if it was up to me, I would update this for, to reflect a more modern, you know, state of hip hop, it, it, you know, um, cause me personally, I would take out the graffiti and the breakdancing. So I don't know if you would, I don't know if you would take them two elements out and just and just leave it and just be the three, the DJ and the the MC and the knowledge, or do you replace them two being uh breakdancing and the other one to basically uh replace them with new concepts or new elements? Cause I just and I only say that because you know, breakdancing and graffiti that is just like I don't even remember the last time I saw some damn graffiti. Like, and I'm so serious that that wasn't just some old shit that's been there for years. Like, who don't you know, of course, you see you you gonna see the occasional shit on trains, but they don't just be replacing trains. So I don't know if the shit was painted 10 years ago, 20 years ago, early 90s. Lay a, I don't know when this was put up there, you know, or a little overpass on the on the highway or something like that. You don't just see this just being a big problem, like oh, we got to get these graffiti, you know, people off the streets. You ain't just gonna be walking around tagging up walls and stuff like that. I don't see that. I don't know if it's going on, but I you I, you would think at least hip hop sites would be reporting on it. It's a problem somewhere, or you know X Y Z, um, as well as break dancing. Niggas just no. Niggas is not getting on the ground no more. We're not. They're not. I'm. Yeah. You know. No disrespect to break dancing. No disrespect to the great break dancers of our time and their impact and influence on the culture. But that was a product of that time period. You said August 12, nineteen seventy four. So seventies, eighties. Yeah. There's a lot of things that uh, Cats was willing to do or didn't have a problem doing back then. That you know. Uh, you you ask a nigga to do some some break dancing now and and he got all his uh his fresh shit on he gonna look at you like nigga what do you, what you want me to do what you know so <laughs> and then and then, and I'm like where's the lane for that you know there's not really a there's not really a lane for break dancing you know there is like there it's not like there's no competitions or anything for it. There's not like this movement going on where it's like even even on some neat shit where it's like just this small section of people doing it. It's not even no shit like that that I know of. It could it could be. But and even if it is, I've always tended to notice that shit uh, after the 70s, 80s, that shit was like overseas, like the, the niggas in Amsterdam and in, in the UK and shit like they was kind of getting on to stuff like that because they they like always 15 years behind i don't know how the hell that happens but yeah that's kind of what it is for me it just seemed like they kind of need to update it a little bit more to kind of reflect how hip-hop is going out because then you know somebody you somebody look at the five elements hip-hop well how how can graffiti or breakdancing be a element of hip-hop if i barely see them things within hip-hop or around hip-hop culture in this day and age so first of all those are great points um but i'll say this um i can't really say they should be replaced because okay so i'll, I'll start with the graffiti now as far as the graffiti goes 
just because of laws and the issues that come with the police and shit like that. And then just with the generations changing and that not being as important, you don't see it like that. How, like how you, like you said, you used to see it back in the day on trains in the hood on buildings and shit like that. But graffiti is still alive just in a different way. It's more alive from the artistic aspect where, uh, I've seen clothing lines where all their designs are some graffiti type shit on the shirt. I've seen, uh, okay, for example, it was, uh, uh, let me see, that's been a few years back. I I was in, and I've seen it at, even if I wasn't there, I've seen it like online or pictures about it. So I was at an event. It was sponsored by Heineken. It was a rap event. It was an outside event. And they had, like, just during the show, they had niggas actually doing big-ass graffiti-ass murals. Mm-hmm. And you could just stand there and watch them actually create it from scratch. And just do... So it's like, it's still there, and people still use it and have a need for it. It's just in different forms. Like, I've, I've definitely seen it at different... Uh, matter of fact, my guy, he had an event, like, a, a year ago for autism or whatever but it was kind of like you know a black event but it was for autism they had a thing there where it was artists there and and kind of like that was their thing the, the graffiti thing and they was doing the graffiti they had some pieces where it was there for you could to buy and then they was doing some live pieces so it's still there like in the art world in the clothing world even in the graphic design world um whether you're doing it for your brand or you're doing it for a clothing line or you're doing it for some marketing material, that that look of graffiti, I don't think that'll ever really go away. It's just not, like you said, you ain't going to see walk through the hood and see a whole bunch of niggas with spray cans doing their thing. That right. aspect of it is gone. But I don't think the look of it and the feel of it, I don't think that'll ever really go away. It's always going to be around in some way form or fashion which well what what how do you think that relates uh to like tattoos oh oh well, yeah I, I left that out 100 percent relates to tattoos I, I i know so many people see so many people graffiti is definitely alive in in the tattoo world um like the, and that's what i'm saying it, it's a whole bunch of because i didn't even think artists. about that initially yeah it, it's so many artists uh, some artists that used to be graffiti artists, they now tattoo artists. So that's what I'm saying. It's like it's still around. It's just being kind of u- utilized in different spaces, in different ways. Um, as far as the the breakdance and the b-boying aspect go, uh, mainstream wise, no, you definitely not going to see it. Like you said, you're not going to be at the club or at the party and a nigga going to bust the backspin and do the worm and, and windmill on your ass. You're not going to see it at the club at the party. So mainstream wise, yes, you're not going to see it. But there is not a dance studio that you can go to in any city that teaches hip hop dance. And you can look it up online. Every studio from your most high end to your most hood dance studio that offers tap and jazz and ballet they all offer hip-hop dance and when you go to the hip-hop dance class they doing they're mixing like a lot of the modern dances that motherfuckers do that we see on tiktok and online and all that they're still mixing in a lot of the traditional hip-hop dance with it you're gonna see them do some footwork you're gonna see them uh maybe do a wave or two you're going to see them maybe do a backspin or some windmilling. So as far as when it comes to hip hop dance that they teach now, that definitely is part of it. Uh, When you go to a lot of the different shows where they have dancers, you're going to see some of that. Um, When you look at some of the dance competitions, you still going to see, like I said, the new wave of dancing, 
and they're going to still mix in that that old way. And then when you go to overseas, to especially Japan and China and all that shit, oh, they full-fledged breakdancing, breakdancing over there still. The yeah. full Adidas jogging suit on, <laughs> nigga, with the Adidas shell toe. They still, they full you. all out breakdancing, nigga. 15, 20 years behind, and they getting this shit like this is great. This yeah. is this well, is okay. Well, part part of it is a little bit a little bit of it is that, but I hate to say that. Uh kind of like overall overseas, they respect the 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 foundation and the the love they 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 embrace it more than us yeah. american niggas do these when you go to japan and overseas they love hip hop culture everything about it they love the big ass chains the adidas jogging suit the shell toes the the break dancing they love it even in like amsterdam and all these different places it's not even necessarily they're behind. They just love the culture so much. A lot of them love every aspect of the culture, the old, the new. They just love it and embrace it. In America, just overall, even outside of hip hop, we just take a lot of this shit for granted. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we we in in, in America, we're just a little bit of the like I said, even outside of hip hop, we just like the the little popcorn, poppy, fuck shit, bullshit. It don't have to have no substance, and it's okay. Yeah. Versus overseas, they still really appreciate the art of hip hop and all the shit that comes with the culture, old and new. Even with like R and B, you know, R and B in the United States, it's sad to say the shit barely exists. Yeah. But you go overseas to fucking London and to China and to Amsterdam and you go to their little clubs and they little dives and shit, they still love the true soul of hip hop. They love your fucking Anita Baker and D'Angelo and the Jill Scott. They love that, that real soul R&B sound and feel that in America we just take for fucking granted and don't give a fuck no more. Everybody just a motherfucker singing over a rap beat, and that's R and B now. Right, a motherfucker <laughs> auto auto tuning over a fucking rap beat. That's R and B now. Yeah. No, what the fuck is it's not. Yeah. It yeah. is, but it's not. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I definitely hear you one thousand percent. And one one more question, too. It's it's kind of off topic, but not really. But like, uh, how does how does like pop locking? Is that a part of beat or break dancing, or is that is was that his own thing? No, no, it it was part of it. Okay, yeah, it was definitely part of it. It's uh, all of that shit was kind of yeah. It's definitely under the same umbrella. It was all part of it. It didn't have like its separate thing. No. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, man. Outside of that, we pretty much covered the uh. Those are the elements, man. It's um, and I guess what I'm saying, just once again to the youngins, y'all, uh, you know, you go to school, and you're forced to take certain classes. You're forced to take certain courses, and you're forced to learn a lot of shit you don't care about. A lot of shit you don't. It's not no relevance to you. You're forced to learn it. You're quizzed on it. You take tests. Um, it's contingent on you graduating and advancing and all that shit. And you and you fucking learn it and you embrace it. <laughs> so if you're a black person, it seemed like, especially a black person that's trying to get into the culture or make this a career choice. Why would you not want to learn about it? You forced to learn, like I said, all this white shit that has no whoever conquered so and so back in the day and the <laughs> fall and the rise of this war and all this shit and what Caesar and all these motherfuckers was doing has no relevance in your life. 
no. adds no value to your life at all but you want this rap money you want all this rap money you want all this hip-hop money but it's not exciting to learn about your people your culture that your daddy and your granddaddy and them created that wouldn't that's that adds no it, it adds value it should be exciting it actually should make you feel proud it should add more to your blackness it should do all of those things you know so agree you know y'all just you know just keep that in mind i might be if i can get a few to change or look at, at a different perspective you know saying i've done my job but yeah definitely um you know got to speak on it and then it's just like you kind of touched on it too uh you know because that was going to be the next thing we talked kind of like the relevance today of the five elements do people care about it is it still a factor you know what you know we, we kind of spoke on that too because those were two good points you said like the other elements i can understand what you're saying they definitely obviously the MCing, the djing shit like that yeah that's always going to be at the forefront because you can't it ain't no music without the beat however you getting it there is no rap without the motherfucker rapping right um but yeah the elements i just feel it just kind of goes to everything um my my take on that i'm gonna say definitely to me and to a whole bunch of people like me that's definitely still relevant it's still important it still matters um obviously if your knowledge of hip-hop don't go before tupac if, if tupac and own up is all you kind of know you know then yeah i'm pretty sure the five elements of hip-hop you either don't know about it or you heard about it and you don't give a fuck about it <laughs> and keep in mind i'm more so speaking on this and 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 pushing this message to people that are trying to break into the hip-hop culture and make a living from it that's more so or or you want to some you know and, and it's different aspects of it it's not just about being an artist it's it's a whole lot of jobs and aspects you can do in the hip-hop culture and make money so i'm more so speaking to those people so so it doesn't get diluted through the years and gets torn down through the years be aware of the history embrace the history understand it so our story can be told and not broken down where like i said in, in 40 years from now motherfuckers have oh vanilla ice was the greatest rapper of all time and oh, and these kids God, don't know no better or no different and they like oh okay i'll burn every cd i ever bought nigga. yeah so it, it's it's important because i because i understand that everybody is not the music the the biggest music fan and all of that some people music is not you know important to their life like that and that's fine you know what i'm saying it's not a problem i understand that so people like that yeah you're not gonna be the deepest into it you're just gonna fuck with whatever you hear on the radio and you know fuck with whatever you hear at the club and that's fine everybody's not gonna be the biggest music person right that's fine, you everybody know? ain't a connoisseur or just a you know deep deep in it same way you know everybody just ain't this movie buff you know right exactly I mean, but yeah. they might like might like a a good action flick or a good you know drama here and there. Yeah. So yeah, it's all relative. Yeah. So it is what it is, but man, we definitely had to take time out for this segment because it is important. Um, definitely one to grow on. If you didn't know, now you do know. So you know, take it for what it is. Dig deeper. Find out more. Uh, you know dig into it it is what it is but that's what we're here for at quest convo uh once again we talk the culture because we are the culture so how can we not talk about the five elements um it's the foundation of the, of the culture right yeah it, it's the foundation of the whole hip-hop culture so if we didn't do a segment about that hey i'm I'm out here bullshitting right and, <laughs> <laughs> and me and dev are not out here bullshitting. yeah so, not at all not at all yeah so that's it. That is what it is, man. It's been another episode of uh, Quest Convo. We covered the five elements of hip hop today. Uh, once again, we appreciate all the love, all the support. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. 
We want to hear from you, good or bad, against us or not. We want to hear from you. We're here for all the smoke. Hit that notification bell so you are aware of every time that we drop this dopeness for you. Also, keep in mind, if you cannot watch Quest Convo, the podcast, on YouTube, or if you can't watch it on culture73.com, you can listen to it on Spotify. Quest Convo, the podcast, is on Spotify, right under Quest Convo. You can listen to all our episodes while you're at work. If you want to put it on in the car, hey, we are here for you. So once again, it's your favorite hip hop connoisseur, Drew Soul Quest. You have been watching Quest Convo, where we talk the culture because we are the culture. And it's your boy Dev Devious, man. Also, don't forget to check out that dope hip hop tees, man. Get you something off of there. Get you something to represent. Get you something to show your love for the culture, like you claim you do if you're watching this podcast. And also, don't forget, he did tell y'all. Use that promo code, I love hip hop, and get to 20% off. That's a nice little bit of change. So make sure you do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dopest hip hop tees.com. We, we love y'all, man. We here for y'all. Definitely. So me and Deb are out. Until next time, peace and love, y'all.